Global war has increased the problem of preventing the introduction of foreign diseases into this country. A matter of immediate concern is the return of malaria-infected troops from overseas. Studies have been conducted to determine the ability of United States Anopheles to transmit these foreign strains of malaria. To conduct these and similar studies, large numbers of laboratory reared mosquitoes are needed. Anopheles mosquitoes are fed on malaria patients and dissected at proper intervals to determine whether they have acquired infections. Many of the malaria strains are further tested by attempting transmission to other human hosts, usually patients affected with general paresis, since malaria benefits this condition. To provide large numbers of mosquitoes, insectaries have been installed at convenient stations in the United States, usually in conjunction with research or malaria investigation laboratories. One such insectary is operated by the United States Public Health Service at Columbia, South Carolina. Temperatures of 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit are favorable for development of larvae, while adult mosquitoes survive longer at a temperature of 75 degrees. A relative humidity of 80% is maintained. Adult mosquitoes are kept in stock cages. A muslin sleeve in the door of the cage aids in preventing their escape. Routines vary, but usually the egg pan left in the cage overnight is removed at the beginning of the day's work. A rabbit is then placed in the cage so that females of the colony have an opportunity to take the blood meals necessary for development of fertile eggs. Shallow rectangular pans marked with the date and species of mosquito are prepared to receive the egg. About 300 eggs are poured into each larval pan. A gentle stream of water rinses the eggs from the sides of the egg pan. This is added to the larval pan to increase the volume of water to the required level. Eggs of Anopheles quadrimaculatus are laid singly, often forming geometrical patterns on the water surface. They usually hatch within 48 hours. A finely ground mixture of dog biscuit and yeast has proved to be satisfactory for feeding larvae. Food is supplied when about 75% of the eggs have hatched. Small quantities are sprinkled into the pans every morning and evening as required. An hour is usually considered sufficient time for the rabbit to remain in the colony cage, although this will vary according to the number of mosquitoes to be fed. The rabbit is returned to the animal room and released.
Each morning, all pans containing larvae are brushed down gently with a soft camel's hair brush. This removes any eggs or food particles left adhering to the sides of the pan by evaporation of water. A stream of water is used to rinse the sides of the pan. This carries food particles to the center of the pan, preventing collection of large masses along the sides. The development from eggs to pupae usually takes place within a period of two weeks. Individual development in the same larval pan may vary as much as a week or ten days. Larvae feed actively during all four stages. When the fourth instar larva is full grown, it changes into the non-feeding pupa. Each day, pupae are removed from the rearing pans with a wide-mouthed medicine dropper. They are placed in half-pint cardboard containers. A hand tally is used to record the number transferred. About 30 pupae should be placed in each carton since crowding interferes with the successful emergence of adults. Some pupae are routinely separated for transfer to the stock cage to replace adult mosquitoes that have died. The containers not placed in the stock cage are covered with a jar into which the adults emerge. The adult mosquito develops within the pupil case. Pressure splits the integument and with a pulsating motion the adult emerges. Emergence is usually completed within three or four minutes. Each day the technician collects the newly emerged adults and transfers them to an assorting cage. This may be any large transparent container with a properly covered opening. The adults are gently blown from the emergence jar into the large cage. Small jars covered with bobbinet at both ends are used to store the adult female. Adult females are caught by using a suction tube or aspirator. A filter in the end of the glass tube next to the rubber tubing prevents inhalation of the mosquito. About five females are placed in each jar for use in transmission studies. Since male mosquitoes do not feed on blood, they cannot transmit malaria. The males, together with any excess females, are placed in a container for later transfer to the stock cage. Rapid sorting and storing of adult mosquitoes is easily accomplished when proper equipment is used.
The males and excess females are placed in the stock cages to help replenish and propagate the colony. Food for the bottled females is prepared from a dextrose solution, usually caro syrup and water. Strips of cellucotton are dipped into this solution and the excess is removed by pressure. The cellucotton is torn into small pieces and placed on top of the jars. The tray is then placed in the storage cabinet where it remains except when removed for the feeding procedure. Each evening a white enameled pan half filled with water is placed in the stock cage to receive the eggs deposited during the night. This type of container is preferred because the eggs may be observed more easily. A single female will deposit from 25 to 200 eggs in one night. Again, the pan of water containing the eggs deposited overnight is removed from the stock cage at the beginning of the day's work. Thus the routine procedure in the care of the insectary is begun all over again. When other laboratories require anopheles, usually freshly laid eggs are shipped. These are collected on filter paper and placed in a glass jar. The filter paper and eggs are kept moist by the addition of a small amount of water. The properly labeled jar is packed in a metal container and placed in a mailing tube. Eggs can be shipped safely by this method. The insectary rearing of mosquitoes for malaria transmission studies illustrates the manner in which scientists necessarily depend upon one another. Malariologists require great numbers of anopheles mosquitoes for use in imported malaria studies and other investigations which assist in the understanding and solution of the malaria problem. The entomologist must give strict attention to the details of insectary routine in order to prevent failures and to improve the technique of mass production. Only then can the ever-increasing demand for insects for experimental purposes be met.